Breaker Broke 23. So today in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to hook up a powered subwoofer to your vintage home stereo receiver. And it's really quite easy, but we need to go over a few things before you make us a, a, a move here. And first of all, what we're going to use to do this uh, hookup today is we're going to use uh, a receiver that will play both main and remote or speakers A and B or rear and f or front and rear together. You need to make sure that your receiver will do that. This Marantz will. I can play A's and B's together, no problem, but some won't. I actually have a big uh, Panasonic uh, SA828, I think it is, and you cannot play A and B together. So, first of all, make sure you can do that. And second of all, when you pick out a subwoofer, um, you're going to want to make sure your subwoofer has high-level inputs. These first four are the ones you really need to, to look for. Um, you don't really necessarily need high level out because that's basically just a bridge from here to here. So most subwoofers on the market have this particular hookup and the flexibility of being able to hook up like this as well as your RCA inputs. Now, this is great for home theater stuff, but an old vintage receiver like this uh, Marantz does not have that capability. And you could probably use a tape level or tape monitor out and hook up into here. Problem is, you're not going to get a very good signal. And your subwoofer is just going to kind of just lay there and just do nothing. It's just not going to give you any advantage. So I like to do it this way. What I do is I put my main speakers where they belong on the main. So my two front channel speakers are here. Then I take and I hook the remote or speaker B. And I hook this to the input of my subwoofer high level in and then of course you can adjust your gain controls and your crossover frequency response and everything to match your other uh, home speakers I happen to be using Klipsch Fortes in this system but which really actually don't need a subwoofer um, they have a lot of low-end on their own but I like to add just a little bit of oomph back here in the corner just for a little extra kick um, and you know you can get as bassy as you want, but this system doesn't really need it. So I'm using this uh, the Serwin Vega XLS uh, 15S. This is like 250 watts, um, decent subwoofer, and I think they come in the oh about the $550 range. I'll put a link to this down below how to grab one of these. So all right, well let's get started. Now that we know that our receiver has A and Bs, and that these two work together. This is a very simple hookup, and um, I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so I wanted to cut the length of this video down. I didn't really want to bore you guys with showing you how to, you know, use the terminals here, but we all know how to do this. Some people prefer banana plugs. I don't, um, so I didn't do that with this one. If you want to, you know, go for it. Knock yourself out, but it's just a waste of money, quite honestly. Okay, so what I'm using here is I'm using some really good Belden six-strand um, home security cable. It's really top quality, um, American-made copper wire. I don't even know if you can still find this. So just any good quality speaker wire will work. And what I did to this wire is I just um, stripped it back, took the other two leads out of here because this is six-conductor wire, and um, then I just heat shrunk those and made up this little harness. I have probably 60 feet or so of that. And the reason why I have that much wire is because I've moved this system around a little bit. And um, I don't want to cut it down. It's not really necessary. There's really no loss in this wire. This, has, this amplifier has no load like, say, a speaker in a crossover network would. So... This is fine having all this wire. If you want to tidy that up and maybe use, you know, like a 10 or 12 foot run, you know, go for it. It's not going to make a difference. So what I did is I did right uh, positive, negative, and then negative positive on the left. You want to keep your phasing correct, just like a speaker, because you don't want to cancel anything out. Now, remember, this is a mono subwoofer. Most all these subwoofers are mono. So you're saying, well, like I'm putting left and right channel in. How's that going to work? And what it does on the input section, whether you're using a RCA input or speaker level, high level input, what these do is it takes left and right and sums them together. You ever heard the term of summed mono? Well, that's what this is doing. So it's taking signal from left, 
from right and it's going from stereo to mono and then reproducing this. This is not like a dual voice coil subwoofer or anything. It's just a mono sub and that's how that works. So you're not going to miss any bass coming from the left or the right channel. You're just going to get a good mono signal. Okay, so now that you've got this hooked up like this, like I say, it's important. Make sure your phasing is correct. Then you just put your woofer wherever you want, plug it into a wall outlet, and then adjust as necessary. Um, you know, all the subwoofers have a volume control, low pass frequency control. So what I'm doing with this setup is because this is going with my Klipsch Fortes that already has really gnarly mid bass. So what I'm doing is I'm rolling this off pretty low. I'm just a little above 50 hertz. 60 hertz, between about 40 and 60 hertz is, is a pretty good setting in my opinion because I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make this my, my whole source of bass. This is just to add some lower end um, punch. So I've got this crossed over pretty low, probably, you know, just a little above 50 hertz. The volume's not up all the way. Um, it's just kind of um, just, just an added punchy feature. So you can play around with this. You can play around with your phasing if you want, but uh, like 9.5 out of 10 installs that I've ever done, you're always on zero phasing. I've never really had to deal with 180 degree out of phase issues. So anyway, that's pretty good. Now, you know, if you ever upgrade to, God forbid, like a home theater receiver or something, you do have your RCA inputs. Another reason why I don't like using RCA inputs, because in some installations, um, your RCA cable uh, in a great length can pick up um, AC noise from your wall outlets or for like, say you have an aquarium in your house or something from like the pump or just whatever. Just there are things that can get into here um, signal wise that you don't want that you can't audibly hear, but it won't let the woofer go back to sleep. Because I'm on automatic mode here where this thing turns um, on and off. It, it senses signal from your uh, stereo. So whenever this senses any kind of a music signal, um, it turns the woofer on. Then about, I think it's like 15 or 20 minutes after it doesn't have any sort of a signal source, it goes back to sleep and it goes back in standby mode. So if by using line level in or high level input, I'm sorry, high level input, um, it's just, in my opinion, a cleaner way to do it. Um, obviously, it's the only way you can do it on a vintage receiver, the correct way to get decent sound anyway. And it's just quieter that way. Your subwoofer will actually go to sleep. So that's kind of a cool deal. Now, you could use a line tap um, device, which is a little box that would go, that would plug into here, and then you have the little box, and then it will convert to an RCA cable, and then you could go into... RCA inputs, but again, um, you're going to uh, run the possibility of bringing in noise to your subwoofer so it won't go to sleep, and you're just, quite honestly, not going to get the drive. This woofer is just not going to sound good. You're not going to have the drive that you uh, would get by doing it this way. Now, um, so this Marantz is 50 watts a channel. That's no problem. So I actually called Sirwin Vega which just kind of bums me out. Tech support nowadays with a lot of companies is really going to crap. Um, the guy was very nice. Tech support was decent, but they couldn't answer a question. And my question was, how much power can I put into this high-level input? Um, now, personally, I put over 100 watts a channel into these subwoofers, and uh, this one in particular as well, and there's not a problem at all. Um... So I couldn't get anything out of Sirwin Vega. They were supposed to call me back, never did. I um, couldn't get any information, so I actually went to a Klipsch dealer, because I like Klipsch stuff, and talked to him, a really high-end Klipsch dealer, and um, they say that they've actually, in not just the Klipsch subwoofers, but some of the other brands that they carry, they've gotten away with 300 watts per channel into one of these. I don't know that I would do that, but you know, say you're running something like an old Hafler, uh, DH220 uh, or an old Hafler 220 or 200 or something like that. You could do the same thing. You would just go off the speaker level outputs on the rear of the the main amplifier and then go into this and you'd you know you'd be just fine. So anyway, that's how I like to hook up a subwoofer to a vintage home stereo. So anyway, thanks for watching. 
you have questions, comments, please leave them down below. I'll put a link down below on how to check out one of these gnarly, awesome Serwin Vega XLS 15 subwoofers. This is a nice woofer. And um, please don't forget to subscribe and smash that uh, thumbs up button real hard. I'd, I'd definitely appreciate it. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching.